Just a few miles downriver from Westminster lies the Greenwich Royal Hospital. This magnificent Wren building was commissioned by William and Mary at the end of the 17th century with twin domes named in their honour. I'm standing in one of the most spectacular Baroque interiors in Europe under one of the largest painted ceilings. The painted hall at the old Royal Naval College in Greenwich is often called Britain's Sistine Chapel, and I must say, it is absolutely astonishing. The painting was started in 1707, the very year in which England and Scotland united to become the United Kingdom. No wonder that the story it tells is one of stability and power, the glorification of the Protestant monarchy, strength at sea and prosperity at home. Looking at painting like this is a wonderful way of understanding Baroque art, because Baroque art is all about extremism and movement and elaborate painting techniques that deceive the viewer. Foreshortening, which is the technique you see there of the leg seeming to come down towards you, that little cherub. And the whole thing is extravagant, it's opulent and it's full of movement. And here's the painter himself, Sir James Thornhill. It's not a name that we really know now much, but he was very important because he was the first British-born painter to be knighted. To explain some of the wonderful historical details in the ceiling, I'm here to meet Martin Ashley, surveyor of the fabric to this wonderful building, the old Royal Naval College. So it's absolutely full of detail. I don't know where to begin, so maybe you can start me off. Oh, wow. Well, um, the, the, the ceiling is, is a, a, a major political statement and a celebration of uh, the royal ascendancy. And so principally, it's a depiction of William and Mary, and William is handing the cap of peace, uh, is, has his foot on tyranny, and tyranny is depicted Oh uh, yes, can you see I there's see, a figure under William's foot? Yes. And tyranny is a personification of King Louis XIV of France. <laughs> so great and, political uh, propaganda and then. So <laughs> full of political <laughs> propaganda. Yes. So it's a very turbulent time uh, and dramatically changing times of, of in terms of monarchy um, and also politics. Yes. And so the ceiling is, is, is redolent of that. But there are also something approaching 300 characters that Thornhill has painted That's extraordinary. In, into his, his yes. great historical yes. essay. Yes, because of course he liked to think of himself as a historic painter, didn't he, as a history well, painter? He, yes, mm. and he was generally, towards the, uh, the end of his uh, life, he was very much celebrated as the preeminent Historical, History uh, so it's sort painter, of extraordinary yes. that he's not better known. The research program was was uh, very much partly to do with with bringing Thornhill into better light, better recognition. Yes, quite in terms rightly. Of his contribution. Yes. The other major story is um, maritime power. Ah, yes. And and of, of course. course mercantile power as mm. well. And so these were the great themes which underpinned uh, the, the success of the new monarchical regime. And so you've got uh, here at the eastern end of the hall, you've, you, you've got a captured um, Spanish brig uh, full of treasures. Yes. Um, and then at the western end of the hall, you've got a British man Ah, the war, triumphant. Which is triumphant. Yes. And, and being loaded with, with, with spoils of war and treasures oh, by a, a winged victory. The paintings conservators have showed us what they call pentimenti, oh, yes. which is changes in thought. Yes. On the left hand side you can see that the whole of the, the dome of St Paul's has been shifted. Oh it's, yes, it's, I think I see like a shadow. You can see a yeah. shadow line and it's, it's been lessened. Obviously Thornhill <laughs> Yes. stood back and thought, well, that's really too dominant. Uh, on the, um, uh, how do we say, the décolletage yes. of, of Queen Mary. Oh, yes. You see, what, what happened when um, uh, the restorers would be cleaning the paintings, they would leave their signatures. 
some Nordic Conservatives thought the, jolly, the very best thing that they could do and where they'd really be remembered would be if they left their signatures on Queen oh, Mary's no. Uh, really? So yes. is there one up there? And so there is. That's yes. extraordinary. <laughs> I think the colour is so wonderful because it's so fresh, but it's not overdone. So it's just been through a major period of conservation, hasn't it? Yes. And they must have done it very sensitively, I think. A significant part of the conservation programme was the cleaning. Just simply very gentle cleaning, and so it was a year um, working from one end of the ceiling to the other. Looking at it from here, you cannot believe that that's a flat ceiling, can you? No, you can't <laughs> indeed. Really and this is the genius yes. of, of these uh, great scenography paintings mm. of the 18th century. Sir James Thornhill worked on these paintings for the best part of 20 years. In his lifetime, he was revered as one of the country's foremost painters, appointed history painter to the king. So it seems about time we gave proper recognition to the artist who has left us with such a monumental visual record of 18th century Britain.